Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to cover a concept that's an extension of our previous topic, integration by parts, and it's called tabular integration. The reason I call it an extension of the last topic is because it's used for problems where you have to do repeated integration by parts. To see what I mean, let's do an example the old way. Say we want to find the integral of x squared times e to the x. Well, when we have an integral in this form, we can use the integration by parts formula to solve it. And using our handy acronym ILATE, as explained in our last video, we know that we should pick u to be x squared and dv to be e to the x dx. To find du, we can take the derivative of u to get that du dx is equal to 2x from the power rule. Then multiplying both sides by dx, we get that du is equal to 2x dx. Next, we find v by integrating both sides of the dv equation. Since the integral of e to the x is just itself, we find that v is equal to e to the x as well. Now we can plug all this info into our formula to get that the integral of x squared times e to the x equals x squared times e to the x minus the integral of 2x times e to the x. Uh-oh. Unlike our previous examples, this new integral isn't directly solvable either. However, we are a little closer and can solve it by another round of integration by parts. I know, I know, but just bear with me, please. This time, let's make u equal to 2x and dv equal to e to the x dx again. To find du, we again take the derivative of u, multiply by dx to get that du is equal to 2dx. Then integrating dv, we again get v equal to e to the x. Throwing this together, we get that this integral of 2x times e to the x is equal to 2x times e to the x minus the integral of 2 times e to the x. This time, we can directly integrate this last integral into just 2 times e to the x. Finally, we can substitute this second integration by parts result into our original integration by parts result to find that the overall integral of x squared times e to the x is equal to x squared times e to the x minus 2x times e to the x minus 2 times e to the x. And multiplying in this negative sign, we get this as our final answer. And what's the one thing we're missing? Of course, a plus c. Oof, that was a mess. Thankfully, there's a much easier and compact way to do this. This is where tabular integration, or the tabular method, comes to our rescue. And you can use this method whenever you are solving an integral that has repeated integration by parts, and where the u function that you will be repeatedly taking the derivative of eventually goes to zero. For our example, we make x squared equal to u, and taking the derivative of that again and again will eventually result in zero, so we can use this method. Just as the name suggests, we clean up this process by using a table. And let's fill in each of the functions from our integral into one of the table columns. Now, let's dissect our answer to see how exactly we can use this to help us solve this integral. First, let's look at each of these algebraic terms. Where did these come from? Well, if you remember, each time we did integration by parts, we made those terms equal to u and differentiated them. So to keep track of them, let's make this first column of the table for derivatives, where each row is the derivative of the previous row. Now, let's look at these exponential terms. Where did these come from? Well, for each of these, we set them equal to dv and integrated. However, since they were e to the x each time we integrated them, they just ended up as the same thing. So let's make this second column for integrals, where each row is the integral of the previous one. OK, so looking at this table, it looks like we can generate each term in our answer simply by multiplying diagonally down the rows like this. But we are missing one small thing. If you look at the sign in front of each of our terms in our answer, you can see that there is this alternating negative sign pattern that appears throughout the expression. So we have to account for that by alternating between positive and negative signs for each of our terms that come from the table. And just as a side note, 
The reason we needed the function we are taking the derivative of to converge to zero is because if we continued our process of multiplying diagonally down the table, we would find that the next term would be zero times the integral of e to the x, which would result in nothing, so the process just stops there. All right, I know this process has a few moving parts, so let's solidify this idea with an example. Let's say we wanted to take the integral of x cubed times cosine of x. In this example, we have a term x cubed that if differentiated enough times would result in zero, and a term cosine of x that we can repeatedly take the integral of, so we can use tabular integration. First, let's again just put those two functions in the table. Then in the first column, let's take the derivative until we reach zero. First, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, followed by 6x, then 6, and finally 0. In the second column, let's take the integral again and again for as many rows as we did for the derivative. First, the antiderivative of cosine of x is sine of x, followed by negative cosine of x, negative sine of x, and finally, once again, cosine of x. Now, all that's left is to multiply diagonally down this table with alternating signs. So our first term becomes x cubed times sine of x. For the second term, the negative sign cancels with the negative sign from our integral to give us a positive 3x squared times cosine of x, then minus 6x times sine of x, and finally minus 6 times cosine of x plus c. And that's it. Do a couple more of these example problems, and you'll be a pro at the tabular method in no time. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button below the video to help us help more students like you. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.